guys, welcome back to the Car Couple Podcast. Felicia, Will, as you know us. Uh, so today's topic is cars that we don't like. Not to throw shade at anybody, but some cars that we have uh, opinions about. Yeah. Um, I don't hate these cars because of the drivers. I have an issue with these cars for personal reasons and if you own the car it has nothing to do with you not supposed to drive the car it's just when I see the car or when I'm around the car these are the this is the way I feel but don't worry about like insults I'm going to give valid reasons or, or at least valid reasons through my eyes on why I feel the way I feel it's all opinionated though right. like it's not don't don't take this seriously exactly. if your feelings are going to get hurt if you hear your car's name you should stop Just watching stop right now watching. now we'll put up pictures of these cars so that you guys have a good concept of what we're talking about that way you're not in the dark if you hear any specific name that you don't recognize off the top of your head but um, I think we'll, we might get through like four or five we'll see yeah. whatever nothing nothing too involved we haven't done this in a while so we want to make sure we get back on a regular schedule the summer's been tough but for me the very first car on this list i cannot stand any of the new honda civic type r's or the ones that look like type r's but aren't type r's now for the record it has very little to do with how they drive, what their performance is. My issue with these cars, I think I might have mentioned it in a different podcast. My issue with these cars is they look very aggressive right out of the box. And because they look very aggressive right out of the box, I see a lot of people buy these cars, do almost nothing to them, and because they have arrow that's already on it because they have really aggressive lines people are automatically impressed by it they're like oh what have you done it gets so much attention and at car shows specifically i see so many type r's that are basically stock get into car shows over cars that people have done a whole lot of personal work to and for me who's been in car shows i went to a show where i literally heard them announce seven type R's for taking home different trophies like top 50 cars at the show and I'm, I'm, I think I might be undershooting it might be more than seven but it was seven type R's at least in this car show and I knew the owners of the ones that did it and they was like they had switched out their wheels or they had done lowering springs or something like that one of the one or two of them had like legitimate work done to it but for me, it was like, there's so much that makes that car look good without doing anything to it when you first buy it, that when those cars are in car shows and they win over cars that people have really put a lot of effort into, whether it's old or new or domestic or import, it doesn't matter. I hate seeing Honda Civic Type R's or the lower variants thereof take so much attention away from cars that people actually do a lot of work to. If you notice, I didn't say anything about it being a ricer vehicle. I didn't say anything about people can't drive it. That car just looks a little too done before you buy it. And then when people look at it, if they don't know, and, and I'm saying it for a reason, it, people who don't know cars are impressed visually by that car very easily. And people who do know cars know how easy it is to make those cars look good so when you go to a show and it's like nothing going on with it it annoys me that that car gets so much attention but as i said no disrespect to people who own it because it does look good i did not insult the way the car looks it just looks too good for free if that makes sense well i, I think you're also i mean like lambos or Ferraris, I mean, they also like look good out of the gate. Right. There's and nothing that people do to those cars. Right. But I've even seen, I've even seen well done Lamborghinis. Like we, we went to, no, we went and there, somebody brought an Aventador, but it was a wide body Aventador okay. that they had done. It had like three piece wheels. It had, had work done to it. It doesn't matter what car you own. I think the thing that frustrates me is when they take like best build or like, yeah. Stuff that actually they 
slapped yeah. on wheels. I, That's it. I Maybe don't think I don't think that car for what I've seen so far. I don't think that car should take top 50 without legitimate work done to it. There's a cat behind me. This is Faye. Yes. I don't, I, like, if you've, and here's what I said, if you've done work to that car, you get my full respect. But I don't think that car should take people's, like, top 25, top 50 spot if you've done nothing but lower it, buy wheels for it, or things mm -hmm. like that. And I feel like that car does get, because Honda, did, they did well with they, they did well. building it yeah. great out of the gate. Like. Right. And because they did so well out of the gate, I feel like a lot of the attention that it gets at shows is not because of the, of of, the driver. Of the driver or the or the person who's building the car. It's because Honda did a good job. Yeah, that makes sense. So as I said, if you own it, great. I don't have a problem with the car. I just up. don't I don't like seeing it in shows that you haven't done a lot to it. Yeah, I mean, right, right. Or as I was saying, like it's more of like, like what type of show are you going to, or what mm -hmm. type of trophies are being given out? Right. Where if you've done such little work on it, and somebody else has like redone everything, yeah, like it shouldn't beat it out. Exactly. Yeah. It, it gets my respect as a car. I'm not disrespecting the car itself. I just don't like it. It shows when it hasn't been done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What, what do you get? Oh, I kind of wanted to go more off of that one, but never mind. I mean, we don't, we can, but if you've got more to add to it, but that's my main point for not ha for not liking the Type R. Well, no, okay, so the Type R is a great car. I have ridden in one, and they move and they feel really good, but I don't like it. Are they actually shows. good, like engine-wise? Yeah, I mean, you're not, you're not gonna, stuff? you're not gonna blow the doors off of it, but it. It's like buying an FRS or a BRZ. That's like, what I'm saying. Like an FRS and BRZ, like they look great, but the power is like. But that's true. But you don't buy it for speed. That's the thing. I know. Okay, so that 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 car annoys me. Those right. cars, mm -hmm. because they look so good, and then they're just like, like nothing behind it. Mm -hmm. All right. So what car are you saying? I'm gonna say both of them. What the BRZ? They look good, and mm -hmm. it's frustrating because they're shitty numbers <laughs> right i mean i think they're like mid 200s they like don't, or a little lower but they don't live up to what they look like right but the thing is for that car we're it, just talking about it today yeah it never was supposed to, it was supposed to be from my understanding of what the thought process was it was supposed to be a better miata it was okay. a, like it was supposed to be a two seater rear wheel drive modern car like okay. so for a really long time miatas were the thing and but they were underpowered you could do a lot to them but they kind of just did an update where you had a new rear wheel drive car that wasn't supposed to be a powerhouse but was fun had a lot of aftermarket support but yeah they're slow they like i've i feel like they should have been a little faster and because they've redone it i think they redid it recently as well oh, okay. and i feel like they, for, for how they look they definitely could have been faster yes yeah but i think i think the three brands uh toyota uh scion and subaru the whole mm -hmm. purpose of it was they didn't want to turbo it because then you're going after a different market because the Miata was a uh, NA vehicle as well. Gotcha. But, okay. like, it was never meant to be fast, but I feel like people were disappointed that it wasn't faster. Yes, yeah, very disappointed. Yeah, because I've, I've seen some really good looking ones, and there is some aftermarket support for making it faster. Like, I know Edelbrock does a supercharger for it, so there is aftermarket support to get higher numbers out of it, mm -hmm. but out of the box, I agree with you. Yeah. Um, I also think it's kind of annoying that they look similar. Well, they did that on purpose, obviously. <laughs> uh, it was a joint venture between the, between the three <laughs> brands. I think it was dumb, per se. Like they shared all their stuff, but then like the right. same. Like I think it should it should have just gone to like one brand. It should have right. been it should have yeah. been a BRZ or a FRS or a GT86. Exactly. Exactly. Um, no, I agree with that. Uh, for so is that that your final answer on that? <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I agree. 
I I agree, but because I know what it was meant to do, it doesn't bother me as much. But I feel like it could it it could have done better numbers for how aggressive it looks. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Okay. It's my turn. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. If you have this car, you know who you are. The memes have already written all the stories, so I'm not saying oh. any. I'm not saying anything that has not already been said. But Mustang owners, I hate your cars. <laughs> Hear me out now. I hate your cars for a reason. Similar to the FRS, except for now we're talking about drivers a little bit. If this isn't you, then don't. Then you don't have to have hurt feelings. But the newer Mustangs look very aggressive out of the box. My problem with the new Mustangs, or the newer Mustangs, is the lower trims look similar to the higher trims. So you have a car that looks really aggressive, but it's not the 5.0, it's not the Coyote, it's that six cylinder, it's that, e okay. it's that EcoBoost. I mean, they kind of did that with every, I feel like every brand's sort of done they're, that. They're they? doing it more now, but, but what the Mustang was supposed to be and has been, it bothers me that there's like, I think there's like a four cylinder Mustang now. Oh, that's sad. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> so, Mustang owners, if you're... I thought you were going to go off. On oh, like, oh, oh, I'm, 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 like... I'm going to, but I'm starting off with something we can all <laughs> agree upon. There are a bunch of different trims of the Mustang, and a couple of them should not exist for the heritage behind what the Mustang was. So do they do that for like cheaper? Yeah, I mean, it's it's all marketing. Like I mean, who would just like wanted to look cool, but like doesn't have the money for it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's all marketing. You you cast a bigger net, and you oh, are able nice. to sell to more people. Yeah. Like I think there were there was even talks of there being an electric Mustang. It might if it doesn't already exist, but um, for what the heritage of the Mustang was, I feel like that's the one car Ford should have like stuck to very few options for like you have the 5.0 you want to keep a better like reputation or something. not even reputation like ford has a good reputation for that car do they though yeah they do like okay. the car itself i'm not talking again i haven't okay. gotten to the drivers okay. yet but right. the car right. itself has a good the, the mustang doesn't really do badly it's a high-powered V8 engine when you get that correct one. They have different mm -hmm. variations. Of, they have the Shelby GT. They have a bunch of different variations of it that have very high horsepower, and it's a rear-wheel drive car, and it looks really good. But if that's what that car has been for so long, introducing four cylinders, potentially electrics, and EcoBoost versions of it when that mm -hmm. car is supposed has always been this thing, mm -hmm. Just leave that as its thing and build a new car to appeal to that market. Don't label it as a Mustang. Huh. Now, on to the drivers. <laughs> and I kind of mentioned it already in the cars. Here's my problem with the drivers of Mustangs. And if this is Some not if this is not you, percentage. If this is not you, then you are safe. But look at me in my eye sockets. If you don't know how to drive. You do not need to buy that car. That's not a car that you learn on. You do not know how to handle That's that fine. much torque, that much power that goes to the rear wheels if you're not a driver. So the people who are, which brings back to my original point of different variations of it, the people who should be buying <laughs> the four-cylinder EcoBoost version of this Mustang are like, are the well, high schoolers. I've, I've no. got e an extra 15 grand, or my dad or my mom will, Want me to will give me the extra part four, of this. Four, so yeah. now, instead of getting the four-cylinder, you probably should be the one that has the electric. <laughs> instead of buying that version of the car, you have the 5.0, and your car just spun around three times because you don't know how to drive. And you're flipping into you're flipping into crowds because that's a very overpowered, rear wheel happy weight bad weight distribution is more towards the back vehicle for you to not know exactly what you're doing, and that's the problem. That car has over the years gotten more and more and more powerful, 
and the drivers that get it are still the same dumb young kids eventually like they're all mustangs look cool yeah but that's the thing and that's the other part mustangs have a visual appeal for people who are not actually car people because people who are not actually car people looking at a mustang they understand it looking at some of the newer camaros they understand it but somebody driving past in an STI or a well done 350Z or a 370 or a well done Type R doesn't get the same visual attention as a person who doesn't know cars hearing a Mustang or a Camaro run by. So a person who has no car experience getting that car because of the attention that they know they're going to get. Mm-hmm. And then they don't know how to drive. They shouldn't have that car. And then they try to show off. That's the problem with that I have with Mustang owners who are like that. If you're not a seasoned driver that can handle that much power to the rear wheels, because it's not an all-wheel drive car, it's a rear-wheel drive car, you will spin that car out at some point if you don't know what you're doing. And there are a lot of young, dumb people that get the car that looks impressive. Me and you went to school together in college, and there were a bunch of dumb kids that had Mustangs. Well, yeah. Because, I can, I can yeah. list them. I remember every, there was a silver one, there was a black one, there was two red ones, there was a gray one. I, I know exactly who owned each one, <laughs> and there was a shit green one, too, which was terrible. <laughs> I'm talking to you, Tenny. I know exactly who you are. But my point is, <laughs> these people did not know how to drive these cars. They had no right having this car at their age with zero driving experience because I knew these people personally and I could say they had zero driving experience. I am surprised that some of these Mustangs did not fall off of the mountain that we went to school on. As you can see, he feels the type of way about but this. But <laughs> with respect to people who know how to drive, I love the car. I don't mm. like the stuff that Ford did with the lower variants and I don't like the people who shouldn't have that car yet. Did they try to like fix these issues? Ford? Th- that's the thing. Why would they fix it? It has nothing to do with a problem with their vehicle. Right, but did they did they ever try to like maybe even out the weight or No, I mean it's not what it needs I mean like, I would say that based on the thing that I just said, maybe that's why they had the four cylinder weaker one that some dumb kid can tr- can learn to drive one. Bye. But but that's my pro- that's my point. If you don't need this car or you can't handle this car and you shouldn't have it. And I'm going to I'm going to lump it. in the newer Camaros with this as well because people understand the heritage behind Camaros. So there are people who are buying Camaros, which are the rear wheel drive variants as well, over the Mustangs, but they know the attention they're going to get either way. So they're buying these cars to get attention and they show off and these cars are very high power, they're rear wheel drive and you can't handle it. So if that's you, don't stop. <laughs> just, just, just don't. If that's you, don't do it because there are way better bad. cars that are cool that you can learn to safely drive. I feel bad for the people who own them and aren't stupid with them. Right. And if that's you, it's like, you, have my, you have my respect. If that's you, I am not trying to insult you. Because even, even when we went to a couple shows and we like asked people, like we're talking to people, and we're like, oh, which one's your car? And yep. the one guy talking about his Mustang was like, yeah. Well, it's, like almost apologizing that he had a Mustang. Right, and that's what, and that's exactly it. Like you, if you own a Mustang, you deserve respect if you know what you're doing. But if you have money to just buy cars, then you can buy whatever you want. But just understand, like you should have a certain amount of skill to handle cars, because they're another variation. Unless you have something that you want to say on another car, I could go right off into something else. No, go ahead. Rich people who just have money to buy cars. Oh yeah. So well, uh, yeah. if you have money, I am happy that you have money. But if you have money and your hobby is cars, get proper training on how to handle cars. Do not buy a McLaren P1 as your daily driver if you don't know how to handle that power. Lamborghinis, Ferraris, whatever it is, this is more of a personal problem than it is a car problem. Don't buy cars that you can't handle. So Mustang drivers and Camaro drivers who are young and don't know what they're doing, don't do it. Don't buy cars that you can't handle. Get something, learn to handle rear wheel drive power, and work your way up. 
It's just like with the 240 that we have right now. It has no power added to it because you need to learn how to drive, drift, slide, and everything with the chassis that you have. And then once you know what you're doing, then you add more force to it. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who are like, well, I need to add a turbo or I need to add a supercharger so I can get the, the wheels to break loose when I'm trying to slide. Then you don't need to be doing it. If you need to add power, you just need to learn how to manipulate the weight of the car properly. Mm -hmm. That's why there are so many car accidents now where people overcorrect in the snow or the rain because they don't know how to actually control well, their car. That's a lot of general public mm -hmm. with but, that. But basic, basically, owning an overpowered Mustang and not knowing what you're doing is the equivalent of trying to correct in the rain. You don't know how to get it back, in, back on track and you're going to overcorrect and go sideways and tap something or somebody that you're not supposed to. <laughs> yeah. What you got? Well, I was going to go off that and just talk about the rich people who own really nice cars and they're just in the garage all the time. That's fair. It's just parked. It's I'd, like... I'd, I'd rather the rich person who drives their car, but just make sure you're safe. Right. No, like even when I was talking to you very near the beginning, years ago, mm -hmm. when you wanted to do all these things to your car, and I was like, just don't be that person that leaves. You do all this stuff, and then you just leave it in the garage because you don't want to screw it up. Yeah. Like. No. I, I told so myself that, I would never let that be, yeah, that be me. Yeah, it's just there for, like, display. That's it. Yeah. Nope. I, I, I agree with that. Um, people who... But again, it's yours to protect or do whatever you want. So if that's who you are, do what you want. But I, it always bothers me that somebody puts that much money into building something meant to perform and then you don't make it perform. Yeah. Or even just, you know, buys a really nice car but doesn't let it out. Yeah. True. That's true. What else you got? Well, I was going to go off on cars. That just looks stupid. <laughs> well, yeah. Um... I feel like it's not fair for me to not like this car, but I just don't like this car. Any of any of the high-powered Fiats seem oh, like yeah. seem like they seem like a joke to me. <laughs> they look not like because look. of the performance of the car, but it's just the noise that you get from that car <laughs> and the horsepower that you get from that car. I'm afraid it's going to flip. Yeah, it just doesn't seem safe to have that much horsepower in something with such a small wheelbase. Mm -hmm. So like the Fiat 500 and the, the variations of that where they actually have a decent amount of power, they're not, again, they're not gonna like beat you in a straight line, but having a car like that and then, I just, it's it's like the, what was it, the Kia Soul or the Cube or something. Oh yeah, yeah. Like those cars just don't make sense to me. Like I feel like they're not safe because their wheels are literally the size of this freaking this pop screen right here. Like, I feel like they belong on, the wheels belong on strollers. So, like, but if, That's a really great visual. But if, but if you're driving it and you have to turn hard, I just always feel like those things are gonna they're fall. Just gonna... They're just gonna flip over and fall on their side. Again, has nothing to do with the driver of it. This is my concern on safety. Well, then you're kind of going off on the way that the car looks. Like, I've always had a problem with Bajas. <laughs> the pickup like the pickup car why i have a i don't have a problem with bajas because i know what they were trying to do and since but since subaru is such a off-road type brand I and you you knew they were going to do it it was essentially it's supposed to be like that backpacking car it just that's why they had the outback though it's I just the, ba the bajas and open an open cab version of it. So, Just get an Outback then. I agree. At that point. But see, like, my, the reason why I don't have a problem with that car, I, I do have a problem with that specific vehicle, but the reason why it doesn't bother me is because I always wanted an El Camino. And the El Camino... I know you did. I'm like, no. But, like, an El Camino is essentially a Baja, but it's, like, a classic Baja. But it still looks... Just the same. Yeah, it doesn't look. It doesn't look too. I'm bad. a hater. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. With, I'm okay with the Baja though. But I'm okay with the Baja if I was like a backpacking through Europe. Person. Oh yeah, I could totally see you doing it, that. I'm, I would <laughs> never do that. Exactly. But no, that's but that would be my problem. Um, yeah. So Bajas, I can understand that. Any any other vehicles? Yes. What? Oh, sorry. PT cruisers. 
They look like hearses. Okay, her okay. A PT Cruiser does kind of look like a hearse. I'm sorry. My problem with the PT Cruiser is they Okay, some people do them up. Sorry. Yeah. But that's, that's true. It still has PT Cruiser or it still has hearse vibes. Right. My problem with the PT Cruiser is I've seen way too many of them with paint on flames. Oh my gosh, can we just talk about paint on flames for like no, like, I a don't have a minutes. problem with paint on flames for very, very classic vehicles. Because it, right, it, it has it an is, era. Yes. It yes. has an era. Not not, not, not on the PT Cruiser. <laughs> and not on any any current cars. Yes. Um, so that that I agree with. Now, I, I will say, I do sometimes like ghost flames that you can see, like, hidden in the paint. Yeah, there's but like, like a difference between But like the hot rod flames that I've seen yeah. on PT Cruisers, it makes no sense to me. It's kind now, of I do know that there is a variant of the PT Cruiser that has a lot of horsepower, relatively speaking, but <laughs> don't put flames on that either. <laughs> but yes, PT Cruisers, PT Cruisers bother me. Um, let's see, is there anything else that like drastically stands out on why I hate it? Huh. I mean, there are vehicles that I don't have a taste for, but I wouldn't go out and say like I don't like I don't like it. So I mean, like there are certain um, there are certain variations of like the Mazda Mazdas that I don't like. Mm -hmm. I will say this: Mazda needs to do a a. Mazda needs to do a comparative version of like the WRX. They need an okay. they need an all wheel drive hatch to comp to bring themselves back to compete with like the STIs and such. Because all their stuff okay. all their stuff is front wheel drive. But Mazda Mazda's body lines on their hatchbacks I actually like more than the body lines on the hatchbacks of like the WRX and the STI. But I don't like it because hmm. they're always front wheel drive. Yeah, yeah, I can see. I can see what you're saying. Yeah, that actually be interesting mm -hmm. for them to put that together. Yeah. Um, teaser on the next topic that we're gonna do, by the way. We are gonna talk about drivetrains next time. Vehicles that have drivetrains that we think should have been other drivetrains. So we were just talking about that. Last I know. Week. So like. <laughs> It, your car is front wheel drive and it should have been rear wheel. Your car is rear wheel drive and it should have been front wheel or it's all wheel drive or four wheel drive. We're going to get into why we think those vehicles should have been the other way. But if you guys have any disagreement with any of the vehicles that we said today. Don't comment because obviously this was all in fun and games. Oh no, comment. I, I, <laughs> why are you scared? Let them say, let them say what I'm they're going to say. I'm just saying, don't take anything seriously here. No, let them comment, say what they want to <laughs> say. I am completely okay with it. I stand by everything I said because I didn't say anything offensive to people. Except Sh for shitty drivers. Yeah, if you're, a okay. shitty, if you're a you shitty driver, what? if you're a shitty driver, you're a shitty driver. There's so many other shitty drivers for like yeah. other reasons. Like, yes. use your freaking turn signal. Right. Come on. It's not that difficult. Yes. If you don't use your turn signal, you're literally not lifting a finger to save Merging. the world. Merging. Okay. Sorry, I could go off on yes. a lot of. <laughs> um, so we're gonna wrap everything up there. If there's any cars that you agree with, let us know in the comments. If there's any car you don't agree with, let us know in the comments. And as I said, next week, next week or whenever we get to the next podcast, we're gonna be talking about cars that should have been other drivetrains. But with that being said, thank you for tuning in to C3, the Car Couple Podcast. My name is Will. This is Felicia, who misses her cue as always. Sorry. And we will see you guys in the next one. Yeah. yeah.